We could have a fully FDA approved COVID-19 vaccine by the end of the summer. So what does this mean for children? Paula. A basketball grade is stolen by COVID after his friends and family begged him, begged him for months to get the shot. But this was one shot he was unwilling to make. And we are starting to sizzle, Paula. Temperatures just inching up above average here on the end of the work week, but it's really the increase in humidity that'll make all the difference. We'll look at heat index readings that'll reach triple digits right now, first at four. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon. That breaking news from Detroit's west side, where police say two people were shot, one of them killed. This is video from the scene on Braden Street near West Warren. Police found a man in his mid 60s dead inside the home. Another man in his 20s was shot in the arm. Information is preliminary. Investigators are still working to determine the circumstances surrounding the shooting. We're following this one and we'll keep you posted. Also breaking, two lanes are now back open on northbound I-75 in Oakland County. Sky 4 over the freeway between I-696 and 12 Mile Road in Madison Heights. This comes after crews did emergency repairs after a sinkhole damaged the freeway last week. Southbound I-75 remains unchanged with only two lanes open through the area. Now to the coronavirus. We've just learned the New York Auto Show has been canceled due to the Delta variant. Here at home, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services just issued updated COVID-19 school guidance. They are recommending universal indoor masking for all educators, staff, students and visitors to the schools, regardless of vaccination status. Meantime, the Henry Ford Health System just updated the COVID-19 situation in their hospitals. Doctors say they are seeing a concerning trend. For today's briefing, I'll start by providing you with an update about our hospitalizations and a concerning trend that we have shared with you in the past two weeks and continue to uh, uh, evolve at the present time as it relates to the Delta variant. As of this morning, we have 48 patients hospitalized with COVID across our five hospitals. This is a significant jump from what where we were two weeks ago. We were in the 20s, so this is almost doubling the numbers that we have seen. Uh, and this is almost uh, tripling the number uh, of the patients that we have seen within our hospitals about a month ago. Doctors say they are also seeing an increase in people testing positive. The number was about 1 to 2 percent a month ago, now at 4 to 5 percent. I should say yes, four to five percent to help protect the community as the spread increases. Physicians are urging people to get vaccinated, including soon to be mothers. We know that 10,000 of pregnant women over the several months have shown the vaccine is safe and effective during pregnancy. We now know that contracting COVID-19 during pregnancy increases the risk of severe life threatening complications to both the mother and the fetus. Uh, this is really a compelling support for getting vaccinated if you are unvaccinated and pregnant. The doctors went on to say that most of the breakthrough cases, people who get infected and are fully vaccinated, are only mild infections. Now, speaking of vaccines, it is a big question. Could we have a fully FDA approved vaccine against COVID-19 by the end of summer? That is the hope. Medical experts say it could get us one step closer to a vaccine for children. It's full speed ahead to get full FDA approval for Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. And sources told the New York Times it could happen as soon as Labor Day, but time is working against them. Less than half of the population is fully vaccinated, and we're averaging more than 85,000 new cases a day. The hope is final approval will motivate more people to get vaccinated. It's also expected to prompt more vaccine mandates and it could accelerate the approval process for vaccines for kids under 12. When you have an e-way for the vaccine that then goes to a full approval, that might have an influence on what goes on. We're collecting the data right now for what we need to make that determination. Until then, more children and teens are getting COVID. Nearly 72,000 got it between July 22nd and the 29th, a substantial increase from 39,000 cases the week before. A new study shows long-term symptoms are less common for children than adults, but kids can have persistent symptoms or worse. This variant is capable of causing serious illness in children. And some experts worry even a quick FDA approval might come too late. At the rate they're going, 
it might be a moot point by the time they actually get it licensed because you could have variants generated that then now escape the vaccines. Today, Eastern Michigan University released its fall plans. All students will be required to wear face masks in classrooms, regardless of vaccination status. The Washtenaw County Health Department also issued a statement today asking everyone, regardless of vaccination status, to mask up indoors in public settings. Speaking of masks, auto workers at the Big Three are required to wear a mask at all plants and offices, regardless of vaccination status. That starts today. The mandate is in response to the CDC's guidance recommending masks be worn in places where COVID-19 spread is high. The UAW says they're also concerned about the highly contagious Delta variant. Almost all new COVID infections in the U.S. are caused by the Delta variant. According to the CDC, it accounts for more than 93% of new cases reported during the last two weeks of July. In parts of the Midwest and Great Plains states, that number is even higher at more than 98%. At the end of May, Delta only caused about 3% of new COVID infections. Detroit St. Martin de Porres has died after contracting COVID-19. Paula Tutman has a closer look at the shot he was unwilling to take. You know, in short, this guy was a playmaker. He was a shot taker, but this was one shot he wouldn't take and it cost him his life. For these friends, there's a lot of laughter at the antics of their friend, Tony Tolliver. <laughs> But there's also sadness, sadness that is so heavy that it bows the heads of giants. Basketball greats who are longtime buddies grieving the loss of their friend, who was at the center court of their hearts. And every day I talk to Tony, seven in the morning, all day we talk. And he always, you know, like Terry said, he, he didn't think he could catch it. And he say, low, low, low key, I ain't taking that. Tony Talbert was the giant amongst giants, a star basketball player, an artisan on the court. Talbert, Talbert hit. Tony was a phenomenal basketball player. Everybody says a pro prolific scorer. I mean, I could tell you stories and stories about him, uh, you know, filling up stadiums, people just coming to see him perform because that's what he, Tony loved to perform. You know, and, and he was no different. He had uh, a million dollar smile. A man who loved his friends, his family, his community. And the most painful word today for those who know him, played with him, worked with him, or whose life was made brighter by his shine. The most painful word today is was, because Tony Talbert is no longer with us. And I was telling him every day, get your shot, get your shot, and he'd be like, you know, he do me like this. <laughs> and he said, I ain't taking that shot. You know, and he say, he say, uh, I ain't worried about it low key. I talked to him about it uh, extensively, actually, and his friends talked to him about it every day as well. Tony was stolen from the world by COVID-19. He got sick, went to the hospital last Wednesday, was laughing on the phone with his friends Monday afternoon, and by Monday evening was gone. They said he would live two hours and live two and a half more days. His heart was strong, but not stronger than COVID. I am angry about it because, you know, we all tried to get him to understand the seriousness, you know, of being vaccinated. And like you say, a lot of our friends, you know, are not vaccinated, you know, so all we try to do is just preach to them, you know, every day how serious it, you know, it is. His sister Terry is broken by his death. He was not only my brother, he was my friend. If you have a friend like Tony, the world will be a better place if you can get the vaccine because people out here are really grieving his loss. And uh, I, I just think that if it can help, I, that's why, I, I mean, you don't understand how broken I am right now, but I knew I had to do this. And I hear him talking to me and he's like, dude, get yourself together because this is what you do. And he's right, his tentacles spread long and wide here in the city, around the country. And so the reason I really wanted to talk about it was to make sure that people understood how important um, getting this uh, vaccination is. Like many athletes, Tony wore an S on his chest. Super athlete, super dad, super person, superhuman, superman. But that S also stood for stubborn. Uh, I was a little skeptical at first, uh, not knowing, uh, you know, a lot about the shot. For me, what really put it in perspective when my wife said, hey, 
lot of people depend on you. First he fought, you know, he was like, I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna fight this thing, I'm TT. You know, that was his thing, I'm TT. You know, I'm gonna, I got this, I got this. Of all of the shots Tony Talbert has taken successfully in life, it was the shot he didn't take that cost him most. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Thank you, Paula. Also making headlines this afternoon, Mayor Mike Duggan and FEMA provided an update to people applying for flood relief. President Biden approved a disaster declaration, paving the way for federal funding to provide assistance. FEMA teams are going door to door to help residents. They also have set up disaster recovery centers in Detroit, Dearborn, Dearborn Heights and Garden City. Document drop off centers are set up in Ypsilanti as well as Gross Point. Uh, FEMA has already approved $28 million in grants just to Detroiters. They're nearing $50 million in grants to the southeastern Michigan area. The president only did his declaration of emergency, a disaster area, on July 15th. For FEMA to have gotten this many awards out the door in basically two to three weeks uh, is nothing short of exceptionally two to three weeks uh, is nothing short of exceptional. We'd like to point out that the federal assistance only applies for damage done from the storm on June 25th and 26th. We did put the information to apply on clickondetroit.com. Governor Whitmer in Flint today to attend a roundtable discussion on public safety. The governor was joined by local and state law enforcement officials, community leaders, and elected officials. The goal of today's event was to address the recent uptick in violence and put the safety of Michiganders first. I think it's similar to what we hear across the state. We've got a lot of phenomenal leaders here who are working together to try to curb some of the violence, the uptick in violence that we're seeing uh, across the nation and certainly across our state and communities like this. But um, this is, I think, inspiring to hear some of the work that's being done, but also sobering about some of the ways that they really need support from the state. The governor also made a stop today in Oakland County for another public safety roundtable. We'll have more on her visit at 6. 40-year-old Upper Peninsula man is sentenced after pleading guilty to participating in the insurrection on January 6th. Carl Dreisch from Calumet received six months in prison, time he's already served, and $500 in restitution. Dresch pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor count of willfully and knowingly parading, demonstrating, or picketing in a Capitol building. Prosecutors have charged more than 500 people in relation to the insurrection, 12 of them from Michigan. Former President Donald Trump wants to permanently block the Treasury Department from turning over his tax returns to Congress. His lawyers have formally filed a request in federal court. This comes after the Justice Department said last week the Internal Revenue Service had to hand over Trump's tax returns. Up until now, Trump's legal team was on the sidelines of this legal fight, but now they are asking to block the release of his returns and order the House Ways and Means Committee to end all ongoing investigations of Trump. Decision 2021, the results are in from yesterday's primary. Now several key races are set for the November election. Mayor Mike Duggan will face off with Anthony Adams. The controversial proposal P will not be on the ballot. The proposal looked to change the city charter. And it was a big election night in Dearborn, where state rep Abdullah Hamoud will take on Gary Warnchik for Dearborn mayor. A full list of results are available here at clickondetroit.com. Well, things are starting to heat up. Let's bring in Ben with what we can expect today and the next few days. Yeah, Karen, just uh, sorting, just putting the burner on a low simmer right now, but we're really going to crank up the heat as we get into the back end of the weekend and especially early next week, starting to combine the heat and humidity at the end of this forecast. Current temperatures, though, still below average uh, for this time of year. We're barely into the 80s across most of the area. Metro Airport at 81, Ann Arbor, one of the warmer spots there at 82. Flint looks like the warmest right now at 83, but very similar numbers all around. And as we take a look at the satellite image, we're seeing some cumulus clouds, indicating that there's some vertical development with some of those clouds. There's still a possibility we could see an isolated shower or thunderstorm this afternoon, uh, but so far we haven't seen anything out there, uh, and it's looking increasingly unlikely that it'll actually happen. But again, that shot is just slim for the rest of this evening. Red Sox still in town versus the Tigers. It's a 7-10 first pitch at Comerica Park, 78 at uh, 
first first pitch time, uh, very pleasant conditions, and generally will stay clear and quiet uh, through the end of the game. And that humidity still in check, at least through tomorrow, before we see a big bump into the weekend. So other than that isolated thunderstorm chance this afternoon and evening, we're going to be dry on Thursday. And then Friday, we get a more organized round of showers and thunderstorms, but this likely isn't going to show up until after the sun goes down. And then we'll see that stretching through the overnight and probably into the early morning hours of Saturday. Once that gets out of here, and depending on how soon it gets out of here, could see another isolated shower or storm in the afternoon, but by far the morning is going to bring the better chance. Sunday looks like it is going to be dry for most of us. It's going to be tough to rule out a pop-up shower or storm with the temperatures and humidity as high as they're going to be. Uh, but Monday will be our next organized area of wet weather here in southeast Michigan. Lows tonight will be in the low 60s, but a lot of us still in the 50s for those overnight numbers. And remember, with that humidity being low, these are going to be some crisp starts, especially down here in the south zone. Mid to upper 50s is what we're expecting there. Generally, the same goes in the west zone. May hold on to 60 in Milford and Canton by tomorrow morning. And north zone low temperatures anywhere between 56 in Sandusky and the upper 50s, uh, 59 there in Oxford, Romeo and Ortonville by tomorrow morning. Temperatures headed to 84 in the afternoon, so that will put us above average. And once we get there, we're going to stay there through the entire stretch of this forecast. Even though we're only going to game about six more degrees early next week, Karen, that 90 degree high is coming with dew points in the mid 70s. So Ooh. heat index readings will be in triple digits for two straight days there. Thank goodness that'll be the peak. Tracking website Flight Aware says that's 49% of the airline schedule. The problem started over the weekend with weather, staffing, and operational issues. Under Department of Transportation rules, travelers whose flights are canceled are due a refund, but passengers on a budget may find their only option is to wait for another spirit flight. All right, let's talk Olympic medal count. U.S. leads with total medals of 79, followed by China with 70. The group representing Russia, 53. In the gold medal standings, China leads with 32, followed by the U.S. with 25, and Japan with 21. Here's a look at our on-air lineup tonight. At 7, it's Jeopardy, followed by our Olympic Zone special and primetime Olympic coverage. Local 4 News will then air at 11.30. Thank you so much for joining us for First at 4.